welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I am coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the Tegamishing Anishinaabeg people, where I live with my fiance, our two daughters, and our five cats. And if this is your first time here, a big warm welcome. And for all returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. This is primarily a knitting podcast. However, sometimes I talk about some of the other crafts that I'm getting into, uh, such as cross stitch, crochet, macrame, <laughs> and hopefully soon embroidery as well. So I hope everyone is doing well. I actually debated whether or not I wanted to film um, this week just given the circumstances that are going on around us it's been for myself it's been a really difficult time uh processing a lot of the feelings that i have about um several things uh, the trans rights issues that are happening in the united states as well as uh, the war over in ukraine as well as the fact that there are several other wars that are happening uh, that really aren't getting as much airtime and kind of the unjustness associated with that so it's been needless to say it's been it's been a difficult uh last few weeks for myself especially i know there are others that are that are having a difficult time processing those feelings as well and i just i just want to say that Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I, I hope that you are safe. I truly do hope that you're safe. And I hope that um, if nothing else, that perhaps the next, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, however long this podcast is, might bring you a little bit of respite from, from the um, current events that are, that are happening around us. And um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, I just, I think it's really important to acknowledge that, you know, it's, it's, it's a really difficult time for a lot of us. Um, I would, you know, I would say that the world in general, <laughs> and I just, I just hope that uh, things are, are going to get better. And, um, I urge everyone to do whatever they can within their means to help with the situations that are happening right now. So, um, moving on to the knitting chat, I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Telio, which is a pattern by Jennifer Steingas. I knit this last year, last year. And, um, yeah, if you want to learn more about it, I'll put a link to, to my podcast where I talked about the construction and, and all that kind of thing. I also have links down below to my Ravelry page. And if Ravelry is not accessible to you, please do not hesitate to reach out and, and let me know and I will get you whatever answers you need to your questions. Yeah, so um, finished objects. I actually have quite a few today, which is totally unlike me. They are smaller objects, um, but yeah, quite a few. So I'll start with this, which you'll have to excuse because I've actually been wearing it. So it's not, not as pristine as it once was. This is, let me just put it in the middle here, show the best part. This is called the Winter Light Cowl. It is a pattern by Sand and Sky Creations. And I mentioned this last time on, on my previous podcast that the designer Simone kindly, generously gifted me the pattern for this. And I am so thankful and I set to knitting it right away. So as you can see, it's a two color color work cowl. Um, I did make a few modifications to the pattern just to shorten the length of or the height of the cowl. Uh, I just wanted to be able to show off this beautiful design a little a little easier. So I I made the ribbing I think half an inch shorter than the pattern called for on both sides and I also omitted a border that was that was at the top and the bottom. And yeah, it's turned out so beautifully, so beautifully. I love it and it's been so warm. Um, so I should say I knit this out of Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. 
I don't know if you guys can hear that, but a bunch of my yarn just fell off my yarn shelf. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so it was uh, knitted in patterns, uh, classic wool worsted, two different colors. So there's a dark brown, and that's called, I think it's called Chestnut Heather. Oh, I'll put the name down below because I can't recall. I think it's Chestnut. Now I'm thinking it might be Acorn. Anyways, I'll put the name down below and this gorgeous beige color that never truly shows up. It has quite a few different colors in it. It's, um, it's called Natural Mix and it's, it's just beautiful and it's very soft. It's 100% wool, non-superwash, uh, quite affordable. You can get it, I think, at, um, at some of the big box stores and yeah, I really, really enjoyed knitting with it. It's lovely. And like I said, it's it was so warm. I've worn it several times now. We went out skating last weekend and the wind on the lake was just, it was just whipping. <laughs> and this thing kept me nice and warm. So yeah, so, so happy to have this in my wardrobe now. So that's my first finished object. And then I have these lovely mittens that are called, I think they're called the Soft Snow Mittens and they're by Sophia Kemenborn. You may know her. She has uh, a beautiful podcast as well, the Kemenbornia podcast. And um, I have to say that these were cast on 100% heavily influenced by Sophie of the Cozy Meadow Knits podcast. Um, I follow Sophie on Instagram and I saw that she was knitting these gorgeous Letlopi mittens. They weren't the same pattern, but um, she was using two different colors and they, they actually might be similar to these colors. And um, yeah, I was totally influenced by her. I was like, I have all these leftover Letlopis in various colors and yeah, they're so warm. So again, I got to put these to the test as well because I, I wore them when I went um, skating last weekend as well so they are knit with I think it's oatmeal heather let loopy and brick red I'm pretty sure that's the name brick red I'll put the numbers down below because I think they're numbers as well yeah it's it, the I knit them completely to pattern um, in the future I would probably add in maybe just a few rounds, a few extra rounds, just to make them um, fit a little, like a little longer in the hand. And they, I mean, I can wear them and they're not uncomfortable or anything like that, but I think I probably need it a little bit longer. So I, and I, I anticipate knitting a, another set of these for sure. They were so quick. I think it took me two days. So like, and that's not full days, but two days I had them both knit. So yeah, they're this, this really cute um, colored rim at the cuff, which I love. And then I think these are supposed to mimic like mountain tops and the snow on them. And then this is like the snow falling, which is really cute. I'll pop in a picture of the original pattern. It was done in white and red, I think. And yeah, they just, they look so wintry and beautiful. So yeah, super quick knit, really, uh, really easy. Um, I didn't have to catch any flukes or anything like that. So yeah, definitely beginner friendly, I would say in terms of mitten patterns and yeah, really like. So those are my second finished object. I'll move on to, I'll stick with the knitting for now and then I'll talk about some of the other crafts at the end. So in terms of knitting, I have a hoe, a half finished object. This is the into the Wood Socks by Melody Hoffman, or Bee Mandarins over on Instagram. So I'll just come closer so you can see. Hopefully you can see, I've used a really low contrasting yarn. So there's these little tiny trees that kind of span the entire foot and up about, oh, sorry, around both sides of the leg. They're not on the, on the soles, obviously. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed making this pattern and a few of the things. So 
I'm not done it yet. Obviously, I have to make the other one, but obviously I know <laughs> I know how it's going to turn out. I will say the trees are a little bit fiddly to make. Um, I had originally started to knit these two at a time and just found that too difficult with the way that you have to create these little trees. And I don't want to give the pattern away, but they're a bit fiddly, but I love so many other things about this, about this pattern. So um, the there's a slip, yeah, a slip stitch heel and she has you do, I think it's, I won't tell you anyways, it, it's a couple rows, let's say, <laughs> of garter on either side. And that just made picking up the stitches afterwards so easy, so easy for the gusset. And I have heard of people doing that. I know not lots of people who have knit the uh, knit socks have done that in the past and I've never tried it. And so this pattern actually had that incorporated into it and I thought that was really cool. I think there's something about when you pick up, she has you pick up an extra stitch and that kind of closes the gap. Like you'll see, I didn't get a hole here, which many times I will. And that's just a really simple, a simple trick that I'll be using in all my socks is to just pick up an extra stitch and um, in between and yeah, you don't end up with any, any holes. So that's cool. So yeah, it's just a one by one twisted rib cuff for a couple of rounds. Really happy with how they turned out or it turned out, I guess. I'm not done the second one. So this is how far I've come on the second one. I've only done, I think one repeat. Yeah, of the little trees. And the yarns that I used for these are both by Urso Yarn Co. So I use their mouton, which means, means sheep in French. And it is an 80% dorset wool, 20% nylon in the colorway Lycorn. So that is this one here. There's some multi colors in there. And Lycorn means unicorn in French. And the other yarn is Urso Yarn Co. Petite Fast Bleu, which is their 80% un untreated BFL, 20% nylon. So both of these are non superwash yarns, but they do have nylon in them. Ooh. Um, and that's this one. And the color for this one is, I think it's latte. Yes, latte. This is light brown color. So, yeah, those are the two colors I used for the socks. <laughs> Okay, and then in terms of knitting, um, I did do some work on my Marie Wallen. So just so you guys know, for anyone who's new, we are running a Marie Wallen make-along. So you can crochet, knit, uh, she has various patterns, um, over on Instagram. And it started last August 1st, and it will run till at least August 1st of this year. So there's still lots of time to join in. Uh, you just have to use the hashtag a year of Marie Wall and Cal over on Instagram. We also have a Slack group. That's an app for those who don't know. Uh, Slack's relatively new to me. It's kind of like Discord if you've ever used that. And yeah, you can, you're welcome to join the group. If you're interested, I'll put the link down below or you can send me a message and I'll get you added to it. I have done some work on my Marie Wallen, but I don't feel like it's enough to, to share this time around. So I will, I'll save that for the next podcast. So I have gone ahead and cast on what I'm considering probably one of my most epic knits ever. I've had the yarn for this for about two years um, and the pattern and just never, never got around to casting it on. So let me explain what it is firstly. So I am making the Brisset dress, which is a pattern by Gudrun Johnston. Here's a picture of the dress. So it's got this lovely feral pattern at the top. There's these cute little um, pockets and there's some feral along the pockets and also around the trim or the hem of the dress. So the original is knit up in Brooklyn Tweed loft. And a few years ago now, um, uh, 
there was a sale going on in support of local yarn shops. Brooklyn Tweed was doing an offer where you could get a certain level of a discount if you bought it through your local yarn shop and they would reimburse them. So I took that opportunity to purchase all of the yarns that I needed for the dress. Um, unfortunately, like I really love, let me see if I can show you another picture close up. I really love the colors of the original. So there's the main colors like a brown and then there's like a, uh, a gold and a very pale blue and a very pale yellow or beige. But unfortunately they didn't have those colors available when I was purchasing mine. So I ended up with different colors. So originally I ended up with um, the four colors that I chose were Storm Cloud, Storm Cloud for the main body, um, Tartan, Iceberg, and this red, I think it's called Camper, Camper Red, which when I ordered it, I thought it was a coral color, actually. <laughs> it's more of a of a light red I wouldn't say pink it's, it's it's a light red so those were the colors that I chose originally and I did a swatch I'll, I'll pop in a, a picture of the swatch that I made because I've taken it out since um and I just I just wasn't feeling the red I just it just wasn't doing it for me and I I hummed and hawed about it and I thought do I really need to order something else to replace it can I just live with it and I decided no I couldn't <laughs> And that if I was going to knit an entire dress in fingering weight yarn, that I'd better love it. So I decided that I would, and I did another swatch with colors that I had in my stash and they just weren't working. Like the colors were good, but the, the loft is a very different, I don't, if, for those of you who have ever knit with it, it's quite different. It's from what I read, it's a single ply, but it's. I think it's woolen spun so it's like it is exactly that lofty so it's light and squishy and um you know 100% wool and it's just it's it is its own thing and when I was putting in what I was putting in I tried some BFL which had too much shine so only that, that one color was really shiny and it just wasn't working and I tried some super wash that I had laying around and that didn't look right either. It just, you could tell that it was different and it just didn't look nice. And your eye was drawn to that one particular color and it just didn't blend as well. So I broke down and went ahead and ordered the one skein because you only need one skein of each, or yeah, one skein of each of the contrast colors. And I got this yellow, this gold, it's called Hayloft. And I'm so much happier now. So let me show you what I've done. So it's knit top down in the round. There's no seaming. Um, I believe the pockets, I haven't looked too, too far ahead, but I think you have, you knit the pockets separately and then sew them on. I think I'll have to have a look. So this is what I have so far. So the colors. I know that the hayloft, the yellow, isn't showing up quite as much as I would have hoped, but I think I'm happy with it. Yeah. Seeing it, seeing it on camera really reiterates that the color choices I think I'm okay with. Yeah. Very happy. So yeah, I'm just finishing up the color work portion, portion right now, and then it is miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of stock in it. So as I mentioned, this is a fingering weight yarn. <clears throat> um, I did do some, I will call them pseudo test swatches, gauge swatches. Um, the reason I'm calling them pseudo is because I did not wash and block them. I just knit them and, and then measured and I could not get the gauge that was required for this pattern. So Gudrun Johnston, I think requires, oh my goodness, I think it was 27 stitches 
Let me double check before I, yes, 27 stitches, 36 rows per four inches. I was getting, so I'd cast on with the original needle size, which is a US four, yes, US four, 3.5 millimeter. And I was getting 24 stitches. Um, I know I'm a loose knitter and I, I, knew, I knew I was probably gonna have to go down some needle sizes. So I tried a US three and I was still getting 24 <laughs> stitches. So then I said, okay, I'm gonna use a US two and I am going to just see how that turns out because I can't go any smaller. I don't have any interchangeable needles smaller than that. I use the Chowky ones. Um, so US twos it is. And I have not measured my gauge. I should measure just, just for curiosity's sake. But what I did do, because I knew it was going to still be bigger, um, is I chose the finish size that is 46 and a quarter inches. My bust is 45 inches. So that would only give me one inch positive ease. Um, but I think I'll be getting more than that just with my gauge. Okay, so back to the pattern. I believe it's only available in this book called Fair Isle Style. I'm so sorry for the glare there from the ring light. <laughs> Fair Isle Style, it's by Mary Jane Mucklestone. The book is out of print. <laughs> so I actually ended up ordering it off of Amazon, a used copy. And this used copy was like brand new. There was no, like I couldn't even tell it had been used. So I'm very happy about that. Um, the sizing is not, it's not great at all. Um, it, it only goes up to, for this particular pattern, it only goes up to 49 and three quarters inches bust circumference. So not the greatest that way at all. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with why it's out of print now, but, um, yeah. So just, just a word of warning. It's really not size inclusive. It's an older book. Let's see, oh, no. it was published in 2013. There's lots of really, really lovely patterns in it. Uh, so many things that I am interested in making. This is called the Coolie Cowl. You can see there's some feral intertwined with, um, I think that's just stockinette or reverse stockinette maybe actually which I thought was really interesting. There's lots of, lots of accessories. There's some beautiful gloves with fair isle on them. There's socks as well. And um, yeah, quite a few other beautiful patterns. So even the pattern on the cover, I really, I really, thought was beautiful um not in those particular colors that's not really my chosen color palette but i thought in a bunch of neutrals oh my goodness that would look really cool oh, all the color work there and there's like corrugated ribbing i think at the bottom yeah and there's a cardigan oh there's even a a lap gown really pretty the cardigan really caught my eye too this one here I thought it was really beautiful and that's the Valencia cardigan um just looking at the sizing for this one again <sighs> yeah it goes up to 49 and a half inches finish size so again Real, ugh, that's the one thing that's unfortunate about this book is this the size inclusivity uh yeah so anyways that is what i'm working on that's my big epic project i anticipate this will take me um quite a while but it, to be fair it's i needed <laughs> i needed a project that didn't involve like tons of attention because I feel like a lot of the projects that I've been working on so my for instance my Marie Wallen 
cardigan. I'm making the chestnut cardigan. You know, it's all over color work, so I really have to pay attention to that. And uh, what else do I have? Everything was color work. So even though there's a bit of color work in this, it, there's miles, as I mentioned, miles of stockinette, and I thought it would be perfect for those mindless, you know, Zoom meetings when you're like in a teleconference or whatever for work, um, for knit night type things. It just seemed to be perfect. So I think I think it'll go faster than than expected. I'm just gonna keep it as like my, you know, mindless project. And I think because I also wanna cast on so many things right now, <laughs> so many things. I really wanna do a cable, some kind of cable sweater. Um, I haven't determined which one yet. So I'm still eyeing my options. I originally was thinking of, uh, the Botanist, I think, by Thea Coleman. Perhaps, I don't know. I don't know, there's so many options, so. And then and then I was watching um, Mel Makes Stuff. FYI, if you haven't heard of her podcast before, it's phenomenal. I only just discovered her recently and I've been binge watching all of her episodes. She's just uh, really great at explaining construction of garments and she goes into in-depth um, explanations on how she alters things and you can get so many great tips from her from her podcast just, just amazing um, so I watched recently I watched her summer garment I think it was like five summer garments recap kind of thing and that's really inspired me to start thinking about what I want to make for summer because I really don't have very many summer tops I think I have three four at four. Yeah. So that's what I'm starting to think about now. Um, what about you? Are you guys planning to knit anything for summer? Do you have any special summer yarns that you're interested in using? I'm always looking for ideas. So if you'd like to leave a comment down below and let me know what you're planning for summer, that would be awesome. Patterns, yarns, whatever. That'd be really appreciated. Uh, I don't have a lot of summer yarns at all so yeah I'm definitely on the lookout and so yeah I just I just want to cast on everything right now everything I'm trying to show restraint it's hard so now I will discuss some of the other crafts that I've been getting into um, so those who longer tune viewers may know that in the summer of last year I purchased a beginner macrame kit to make a macrame plant holder and I finally did it <laughs> it took me a while but I finally got the uh, the courage to try a new craft so <laughs> here is my finished macrame plant holder I'll pop in a picture so you can see what it looks like when there's an actual plant in it um, it's it's definitely not perfect by any means but but it was really fun and it didn't take all that long uh, I know you can do much more detailed in-depth types of macrame this was definitely a beginner one um, yeah so the kit I'll just show you I got this from yarncanada.ca which I think is like I think it might be the same as webs in the US think so yeah this is the the kit that I got so it give they give you um, there's some wooden beads here and two different colors of cordage so there's white and then this like jute I guess colored one and the instructions were not the greatest for a beginner uh, oh they give you the ring as well sorry I forgot there's a ring, obviously, that you want to hang it from. Um, yeah, the instructions weren't the greatest, so I did end up having to go online and look up, like it would say, like, tie a square knot, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've never done it. But essentially, that's what these are. I guess they're like the beginner, the beginner knot for macrame. But yeah, I, I had a lot of fun, and I can definitely see more of them in my future maybe some fancier ones I showed last I think it was last time when I showed um, one of the books that I picked up at a thrift store 
it was a a needle needle crafts book kind of and it had like different patterns for all different types of needle crafts and one of them was macrame and they had a macrame plant holder in there that was like dual so there's like you know two it holds two <laughs> plants and it was really cute so i might i might try that so i'm going to be on the lookout for more of this kind of cordage i think i'm going to go to <clears throat> michael's tomorrow and just have a look around and see if they have that kind of stuff i do need some wooden beans anyways so yeah but yeah i i mean you could even do like a whole bunch of beans i think that would be really cool a bunch of beads all the way down that'd be really cool too the possibilities are endless this is a whole new rabbit hole and there's so many videos online on like on youtube to help you so if you're interested in macrame i highly recommend it it was really fun it's always nice to switch up crafts too like if you need a break from knitting or you're not feeling inspired with your knitting or whatever try something new so that's that and then finally, I mentioned this on the last podcast that I had been making some granny squares for a, I'm gonna call it the Battenberg blanket because that's the type of kind of style that I'm going for. So I know they can be, you know, there's lots of different names for these, but basically what I will be doing, I'll pop a picture in so you can see what I'm talking about is doing squares of cream and then alternating with the, the the different bright colors so here's some of the squares that i've made i'll just actually i'll just hold them up sorry they still have strings attached but just like super bright colors <laughs> these are all leftover um, most of these are hedgehog skinny singles i think they're called hedgehog fibers that i had leftovers from my uh what the fade shawl and then um some other projects that I made back in the day. Now it seems so long ago now. But yeah, so I've done quite a few squares. And um oh Mika from Skeins of Dreams podcast. If you haven't seen her podcast, it's great too. You should totally check her out. I will put a link down below. Um, she's always making so many, like so many beautiful things. Um lots of inspiration to be found there she's running a blanket make along and um i think oh i can't remember the hashtag i'll put it down below i think it was something like blankets blankets of dreams but i'll put it down below so you can see and um that's over on instagram and she also has a slack group for it as well like a chatter group where you can share pictures and talk about the blankets that you're making and stuff. So that's really inspired me to start making more of these squares because these, I started this several years ago and I know that's probably the case for most blankets is that they, they're a long-term project. I don't really consider them like ancient or anything like that. I just, they're, they're ongoing. They're ongoing. I don't know when I'll ever finish a blanket, but this has inspired me to pick up, pick up where I left off and to start making more squares and, and really start um, considering getting it put together because I'd really like to have it. I don't have any, I've never knit or crocheted a blanket before. So I will say I'm very picky. <laughs> I wanna use up my scraps, but I'm very picky about how I use them. Like I, they're, for me, I need to have them like organized in some fashion. I can't just like, I am, I admire those people who do the like, what are they called the the ones where you just crochet across you just grab a color and go I can't do it <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me I don't know if it's OCD or what but I can't I need to have like some form of of order to my scraps I know it's really silly and it holds me back a lot because because I mean they just yeah I just make it difficult for myself so anyways, I figured the Battenberg was a good option because like I said, it has those cream squares in between. So it kind of balances in my mind, in my eye, it balances the, the crazy colors that I'm using. But yeah, I, I encourage you to join that make along if you're, if you're making a blanket right now or if you're considering making one, now's a great time to cast on. I think it's a year long, so, and it just started. So yeah, lots of time. So that is, I think that's it. Hopefully I covered everything I needed to. But if you ever have any questions, of course, 
feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer. Um, yeah, I just, I would love to know what you're working on. If you want to let me know, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're working on. What's bringing you joy right now? Okay, I think I will leave it there. And if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And I will see you all in three to four weeks. Bye.